Would you like to take the guesswork out of the rhythm method? Well, now you can, with the contraceptive alarm clock that does all the work for you. Every day when you wake up, just pop the electronic thermometer into your mouth and it will automatically detect the minute temperature changes in your body that signal when you're fertile and when you're not. Natural family planning. It's never been so easy. Designed in Hong Kong and made in China. This is no ordinary beachcomber. This is Professor Hiraoka, and his harvest could be worth a small fortune. No doubt you've noticed we're not actually collecting shells or pretty sea polished stones. No, no. We're gathering all the old bits of washed up plastic we can find. And have a look up there because that's where we're taking them the brand new Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. You ready, Professor? Yeah. How have you done? Yeah. Professor Hiraoka has a fascination with lasers. He's been firing them, well, at just about everything, really, for the last 15 years. His latest targets are the old plastic bottles from the beach, which he says he can turn into diamonds. Diamonds are just carbon, and there's plenty of that in plastic. The trick is to rearrange the carbon atoms in the plastic into diamond form, and that's where the lasers come in. Watch what happens inside here. The laser melts the plastic bottle into tiny, white-hot, molten fireballs. The fireballs smash into a hot silicon plate with such force that the carbon atoms are freed from the plastic to form crystals of pure diamond. Now, these diamonds aren't exactly large. I don't think Elizabeth Taylor would be too impressed because you need a scanning electron microscope to see them. And I don't think she's got one of those. But whereas jewellers aren't beating a path to Hiraoka's door, the less glamorous drilling industry is. They'll pay big bucks for these tiny diamonds, which are just what they need to put a hard edge back on their worn-out cutting tools. So is Hiraoka about to leave academic life to buy a beach of his own? Strangely, no. He signed the rights to this lucrative process over to the university. Is the stress of modern work taking over your life? Is there no light at the end of the tunnel? Well, at times like this, you need to relax, unwind, and reach out for your inner spirit. And it's never been easier, because now there's the revolutionary, all-new electronic hymn book. 500 of your favorite hymn tunes, all available at the touch of a button. Choose from any one of five instruments to let the stereo sounds transport you into a world of peace and tranquility. Designed in Hong Kong and made in China. Hong Kong is the archetypal concrete jungle. They've been knocking up tower blocks here at a colossal rate since the 60s. But the government found that some were far from safe. A 1989 survey of 55,000 buildings revealed that 30% were suspected as dangerous. When one fell down, that suspicion proved well-founded. It all boiled down to some irresponsible building practices in the late 60s when unscrupulous contractors were using cheap material and mixing concrete with seawater. Since discovering the problem, the housing department have had their hands full. They've had to demolish a lot of the old buildings, and a few, like this one, have had to undergo emergency surgery. Now, while all this was going on, one man was busy coming up with the ultimate way to diagnose sickness in Hong Kong's concrete. Engineer Alan Jiri. The problem is that there are so many buildings in Hong Kong, and to do a survey of all of those is laborious. Well, how long does it actually take to do a survey? Are we talking about days or a weeks? A single survey can take weeks or even months. Oh, as much as that. And it's intrusive. You need to take concrete samples out of the building, take them back to a laboratory, and then analyse them. All very time-consuming, but Alan's devised a fiendishly cunning way of detecting problems. Without drilling out lumps of concrete, 
without doing a survey at all. Central Plaza is Hong Kong's tallest building and just three and a half years old, so you wouldn't expect any problems here yet. Any problems here yet? Absolutely not. Well, as I said, you wouldn't expect any problems. But how does he know for sure? He knows because he has installed the world's first building stethoscope here. I travelled up to the 73rd floor without knowing what a building stethoscope was. What I imagined was something big and elaborate with wires trailing all over the building. No. This is it, I suppose. This is it. And here we have essentially the heartbeat of the building. And the building looks healthy to me. How can a building have a heartbeat? Well, the wind causes all buildings to vibrate at a certain frequency. That's what the stethoscope picks up. Any structural damage or weakening of the concrete will cause the building to become sloppier and vibrate slower. A subtle change that can be picked up by one small sensor on the floor. That's all you need? That's all we need. No samples, no surveys, just a tiny sensor. Seems hard to believe. We'll prove it. Now, what we've got is a concrete slab, which is our building, the fan, which simulates the wind. Up there is the sensor, which feeds in the heartbeat of the building into the computer. The heartbeat has jumped to the left. The damage has been detected. Rather than going round buildings with a drill, Alan now does most of his surveys over a phone. He's hooked up to stethoscopes installed in some of Hong Kong's most prominent skyscrapers. But Hong Kong surveyors aren't about to be put out of a job, not just yet anyway. Alan's now got to prove that his stethoscope works just as well for spotting dangerous old buildings as for monitoring shiny new ones. Put it on the floor, fix the sensor, and bingo, within hours rather than months, you can have your answer. So what would your prognosis be, Doc? How long has it got? Well, it's, uh, it's not as good as Central Plaza, but I would think it's still got a few good years left in it. Of course, with such a radical system and surveyors being a naturally cautious bunch, they'll take some convincing before they put their trust in something that makes it all look too easy. Brighten up your breakfast with the toaster with a brighter message. Designed in Hong Kong and made in China. Hey, hey, just a minute. Never mind designed in Hong Kong. Is nothing made in Hong Kong anymore? Well, not a lot. These days, it's nearly all made just across the border in China. In Shenzhen, to be precise. Hong Kong companies can do their manufacturing here for a fraction of the cost of doing it in Hong Kong. Meanwhile, Shenzhen gets Hong Kong dollars, Hong Kong companies get cheap labor, and though working here is no picnic, by Chinese standards, it's good money. In fact, people in Shenzhen are the richest in China. Would you believe that 10 years ago, this was a quiet town of 300,000? Now, it's a screaming city of 4 million and still growing. Around here, it's build, 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 as ferocious development continues to turn the area into a giant industrial zone, primed to take advantage of a Hong Kong in Chinese hands. So while everyone's asking just how China will change Hong Kong, it's worth considering how Hong Kong might change China. It's Sunday morning, and these parents are picking their children up from a rather special school. I mean, how many Sunday schools do you know with a waiting list of 11,000? Now, just watch this, and I'll explain everything later. Hi, Thank you. <laughs> the teacher of this bunch of calculating prodigies is Simon Wu, something of a celebrity in Hong Kong. He has his own weekly radio show devoted to teaching people to improve their memory. But when off the air, he's dispensing his own special brand of education. Yep. 
百五十四。好，开始。In Simon Wu's classroom, the calculator has been binned to make way for an abacus revival with a twist. Traditional abacus is one-handed, but Simon believes that using two hands stimulates both brain hemispheres to give faster results. You are pretty astonishing, kid. But let's see how good you are without your toys. <laughs> And once they can use the abacus, they're taught to visualize it. The end result is these children are blisteringly f***ed at mental arithmetic. What would I have to do if I wanted to learn? First, you need to be a to find out just how fast they are, we brought in Ronnie Chan, accountancy student, the king of the calculator, the fastest fingers in the East, to play against abacus experts Cheng Ho Sum, aged six, and Wei Wan In, aged seven. One question, I have the answer in my pocket. Simon, it's all yours. 好，準備開始。九百八十五減五百九十四加八百一十二減三百三十八減三百五十七加九百一十四減九百七十五等於四百四十七。No. And the answer was four hundred and forty-seven. Where one in wins. So, class, why do you send your children to this school? Mr. Chan. I just want my son to improve his concentration in the classroom. The second is a calculation more fast. Thank you. And Mrs. Wong. I think this method is better for our students than before, and more efficient. I hope the next day the money will be more than the last one. Thank you for the time, Mommy. But what about that all-important question? What will happen after 1997? China is going to take over Hong Kong. Uh, some of those changes are going to be good, and some of those changes are going to be bad. But that in itself is not going to cause the demise of Hong Kong. I have already noticed a deterioration in the quality of life here in Hong Kong, and I'd expect that to escalate after 1997. Hong Kong and Shanghai will become the LA and New York of China. I think Hong Kong will remain extremely prosperous and free, combining economic liberty and political liberty. That's my hope, uh, and um, I'm moderately optimistic about it. Well, we won't add to the speculation, but there is one thing I can tell you. On June 30th, 1997, there isn't a hotel room to be found anywhere, because they've all been booked since 1990. And whatever happens in the future, this will always be a thrilling place. Good night. Good night. Next week on Tomorrow's World, the Italians who won't ever get heart disease, no matter what they eat, and the latest weapon in the battle against the drug barons, the drug-busting mini-sub. And next tonight on BBC One, comedy, only fools and horses.